Why does a seemingly harmless pair of earrings cause such discomfort? What could possibly go wrong during a hike in the woods? This is a question of hypersensitivity reactions. Imagine a high school girl gifted a pair of adorable earrings by her boyfriend. She's thrilled and wears them immediately. Later, she ventures into the nearby woods in a dress to rescue her missing chihuahua. Two days later, she wakes up to sore ears and a rash on her arms and legs, each less than five millimeters in diameter. There's no fever, but her mother is concerned enough to take her to the doctor. The earrings, it turns out, were made of nickel. This is a classic case of a hypersensitivity reaction, specifically a type 4 reaction. Hypersensitivity reactions are a result of the immune system mistaking harmless substances as threats and launching an attack. In a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, also known as a delayed type hypersensitivity or DTH, it's the T cells that are the culprits. Unlike other types of hypersensitivity reactions that involve antibodies, DTH involves the direct action of T cells. They recognize antigens, in this case, nickel from the earrings as well as poison ivy from the woods, and trigger an immune response. The T cells release cytokines, which are chemical messengers that call upon other immune cells to the site of the antigen. This leads to inflammation, which in our high school girl's case, manifested as a rash on her legs and sores on her ears. The word delayed in DTH comes from the fact that these reactions typically occur 48 to 72 hours after exposure to the antigen. This explains why the girl's symptoms didn't appear immediately after she wore the earrings or went into the woods. So, to answer our initial question, it was the T-cell mediated mechanism that was responsible for both rash and ear sores. This is a classic example of how our bodies can sometimes overreact to harmless substances, leading to discomfort and even disease. In summary, our immune system is a complex and fascinating defense mechanism. But sometimes it can mistake harmless substances as threats and launch an attack, leading to what we call hypersensitivity reactions. In the case of our high school girl, it was a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction mediated by T-cells that caused her symptoms. Understanding these mechanisms can help us better manage and treat these conditions.